Greetings and welcome back. We are continuing our conversation uh, with Kate Chopin's offering, The Story of an Hour. I actually want to go to page 626 now quickly in your notes, and we'll be working at level one and level two here for the next few minutes as we finish our comments. I think I already said to you in my uh, comments that set up this study that Chopin's story is a classic work of feminist literature, but I actually want us to begin by pointing out that Chopin is also in control of her literary understandings. Notice under literary analysis this issue of irony. So as we work through this story at level two, we want to ask simply, what is ironic about this text? And again, we, don't, we, we, we want to be as specific as we, as we can be. Let's now go back to, again, this, um, th this uh, story at level one. We've already said it's a three-part story. Far part one, she learns that her husband is dead. Part two, she, after being very sad about that fact, she comes to this view that she is free and has no allegiance to anyone else. No one else can tell her ever again in her life what it is she must do. And then finally, at the end of the story, part three, she sees her husband standing at the bottom of the stairs and she falls down dead. Uh, end of story. End of story. Leaving, of course, all kinds of interesting questions about level two. Now, I actually want to invert here, and I want to work 2B first, and then we'll go to 2A. So let's talk 2B really quickly, and these ideas of irony. So here I am with you on page 626, and again, let's remind ourselves, irony is when something happens that is contradictory to what is supposed to happen. Okay? In other words, something is different from what you would assume. Okay? And let's talk about the three different types of irony listed there. The first notice is verbal irony. Someone says something, she deliberately contradicts what that person actually means. Okay? So, for example, when someone says something that um, is not really the truth, okay, then you have an example of verbal irony. Now, the question of verbal irony is found in this story, especially, go with me on uh, page 631, okay, on 631. Notice the paragraph. She knew that she would weep again when she saw the kind, tender hands folded in death, talking about her husband, right? I'm top of page 631. The face that had never looked save with love upon her, fixed and gray and dead. But she saw beyond that bitter moment of a long progression, procession of years to come that would belong to her absolutely. Now, the question obviously is, does she really mean when she says that her husband never looked save with love upon her. There have been one or two readers of this text that say, not altogether sure that's the case, or she might not have the feeling that she has right now. Other readers have said, while she clearly loved her husband, she's, she's going to get beyond it pretty quickly, and she's going to be okay. Let's look at the next kind of irony that's listed on page 626. Situational irony occurs when something happens that contradicts readers' expectations. Jot down what for you is the classic example of situational irony in this story. A woman loses her husband. And the expectation, of course, is she is going to be very sad. Were you at all shocked when just a few minutes afterwards, alone in her room, sitting, she says those three times same word, free Free, free. Situational irony at the very end of the story. Notice when she sees him at the bottom of the stairs. She can't believe that he's not dead. And she falls down and cranks. Right? Something maybe what one, uh, the reader would not expect at all. Let's look at the third of those ironies. Dramatic irony occurs when the reader or the audience is aware of something that a character does not know. Now this is of course classic and we work with this one to get to level 2A. 
Really, this story was so controversial because of dramatic irony. Why does she crank at the end of the story? Now, the immediate answer is she has a bad heart. That's the opening line of the story. She has a weak heart. So she cranks because she has a weak heart, and she is shocked to see her man standing at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, he's alive. Bam. Down she goes. She's dead. The doctors will report she just couldn't handle that situation of excitement and joy, and so she cranked. And that works for him. And that works for Josephine and her husband Richard. It works for every character in the story. Every character in the story will live the rest of their life going, man, that was so sad that day. This, you know, she, she heard about her husband's death, and then when she found out that he wasn't dead, she was so excited that she died. Her heart was so full of love for him and joy. And of course, her husband will go to his death saying, she loved me, she totally loved me. She loved me so much that she even died because she was so excited. Right. And several of you are smiling because you go, yeah, that's not why she died at all. We, as readers, are almost like voyeurs watching this little scene in the middle of the story where she's alone in the bedroom and she goes, oh, wait a minute. If I ain't got no man, I don't have this. I don't have anybody tell me what to do. I am free, body and soul, to do whatever I want. And then she sees him crank. And the reader understands, oh, uh, see this is a classic example of dramatic irony. Oh, she dies because she cannot imagine having to go back and live in a life she once lived in when she discovered the potentiality of freedom. It would be like a runaway slave believing that she has made it and then all of a sudden at the last second whoosh, the slave catchers catch her up and put her right back in the same experience and she can't do it, she can't live it. It's too painful for her. Alright, let's jump now to level 2A. Why was this story so controversial? Two magazines not publishing this story because they said it was immoral. Immoral? We don't have any like sex scenes or anything in a story like this. Why would any male reader, let's ask it this way, why would any male reader be offended by this story? Write it down right now for you at 2A. Why would I, I mean, on the outside looking in, this is nothing more than a dumb story about a woman who cranks at the end of it. In the middle of the story, she finds out that her husband is dead, and then she's like, oh, cool, I'm free. And then at the end of the story, she sees him again, and she cranks. Notice this story says a lot without saying it. I would write that down in 2A. This is a classic gotcha story. This story says a lot without saying it out loud. What do you mean saying it out loud? Saying what out loud? Jot down what for you is the central message of a story like this. I'll give you some suggestions to kind of set you up. In this story, what does Chopin seem to suggest or infer about women living with men? What does this story see? Dude, what does it mean that when she loses her husband, one of her first thoughts is the word free said three times? Free, free, free. What does that seem to suggest? about the way she thought of what it was like living with him. What is the opposite of free? Hmm. In other words, she sees being married to a man the way a slave would see being a slave. Point number two. And this is crucial to the irony of the story. She doesn't realize her views of marriage until he's gone. Her first thought when he's gone is, oh no, I'll have no man to take care of me. I'm not going to have a man to protect me. I'm not going to have a man to tell me what to do, tell me what to think, tell me where to go. Oh, I'm so sad about that. Wait a minute. That means I don't have a man telling me what to do, telling me where to go. I'm free. I can do whatever I want. I can live my life for myself. I don't have to live it for my man. 
yay, walks out of the room as a goddess of, did you see the V word is capitalized, as a goddess of victory. Victory? Victory over what? Dude, you haven't done anything. All you did was hear your husband cranked, walked into your bedroom and sat out in a big chair for a few minutes, and when you walk out, totally different woman. She is free. Goddess of, of victory? Victory over what? Male readers had to come to terms with the fact that Chopin was playing a very nasty game here, where she was able to say it without saying it, and lots of female readers of this story went, is it possible? I'm living as a slave when I'm married to a man because of this. And I've just accepted it just like everybody else. But I read this story and she's like, wait a minute. Once he's dead, I got nobody to tell me what to do. I'm totally free. Hmm. Not unlike, for example, the student who says, as a junior, let me get this straight. When I graduate from high school, I get to leave home and nobody tells me what to do anymore. Call my mom, my dad, my guardian. I'm free. Right? Similar kind of setup. Something that one would maybe hope would happen. But notice when she first hears the death of her husband, she isn't excited. She doesn't immediately go, oh, that's so great. My man is cranked. That means I can live any way I want. Yay, I'm free. No, 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 no. That is not how this story is written for a reason. Level 2A. Let's write it down. Chopin wants to suggest most women are blind to their slavery. They do not get it. They do not understand the relationship that they are forced to live in with a man. And then, slowly, it dawns on them. Male readers saw this story as dangerous because it seemed to plant a seed in the mind of female readers who were married or soon to be married. And all of a sudden you started having young girls saying things like, yeah, I'm not interested in getting married. What do you mean you're not interested in getting married? That is what you will do. No, I don't think so. What do you mean, no, you don't think so? I am your father and I'm telling you you're going to get married. Yeah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm going to live for myself. I'm not going to get married. If I get married, it's going to be on my terms. I'm going to choose it. Ooh. A radical moment in American thought when female readers started to read this story and say, is it possible that no one really understands this arrangement called marriage? For example, notice that even today, for most females, when they marry, they drop their family name and accept the family name of the man. Question. I've asked this question and I had juniors often that will go home and go, yeah, why doesn't the man adopt the family name of the female? Like, why? I mean, they're just names, right? So, like, why does the family name of the guy mean more than the family name of the girl? Why? Like, why? They're just family names, right? No, no, that's not the way it works. What do you mean it's not the way it works? Like, who says that's the way it works? What do you mean who says that's the way it works? That's the way it's always been. I'm aware of that, but why has it always been that way? Why is it that a guy's name is so much more important than a girl's name? And the answer, of course, whether most people don't know it, of course, most people don't even know what an Aristotle is. There is an answer. And Aristotle suggested it long ago because that's the way that gods want it to be. That is the natural order of the world. And to screw with that is dangerous. And even worse, atheistic. Whoa, Chopin is playing a very dangerous game here when she plays the end of the story. The last thing I would say about this story that's so brilliant is notice that Chopin does to you, the reader, one of these. Hey, psst, hey, 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 watch this, watch this. It's just between you and me. Nobody else is going to know that she dies of a broken heart. She looks at her husband and goes, oh, no way. Crank. She doesn't want to be with him anymore. She wants to be free. Marriage is not freedom. And she can't go back. So she cranks. He thinks it's because she loved him so much that she was so excited that he was alive. But you, the reader, go, yeah, no. 
No, 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 that ain't it at all. She didn't want to have to go back. She was a goddess of victory. Why would she go back to that? That would be like crawling back inside of a cage again. She couldn't do it. Hmm. Question. What do you imagine is the response to readers who are already married who read this story? Let's write it down really quickly for both male and female responses. If you are a wife and you read this story, Right? You are a wife and you read this story. I once had a junior girl who read this story and she went home. And she said, we read this really strange story about this woman who thought her husband died. And when he, she found out that, his die, that he had died, she was like so happy because she was free. She didn't have to live with him anymore. Man, can you believe living like that? And the mother off. She's like washing the dishes. She goes, yeah, I can understand that. And the girl went, whoa, whoa, whoa what did you just say? And, and the mom went, yeah, I, I, I understand that. And she's like, what are you talking about? And she goes, oh, honey, living with your dad has been utter hell. And my student went, well, you, look, you like fake it really well. That is right. I fake it really well, and I faked it for you. But I promise you, the minute you graduate, I'm out of this situation. We've done it for you, hon, but at minute, I'm gone. And the, she was like stunned. She went, I was like this woman in this story. I thought I was, that everything was like so happy, and everything was like, Yay! Not so much, Ma said. Not so much. If you're a male reader of this story, jot down, how would that one work for you? You are a husband, and you read this story. And your assumption is that your girl is totally into you, and only you. And all of a sudden, you read this story, and you go, wait a minute. Is it possible that women see the relationship in marriage as something akin to slavery? And if I got jacked by some bus, she'd probably be sad for all of about 10 minutes and then go, yeah, now I got my freedom and I am not giving that up again. What? A lot of male readers of this story were deeply offended by the suggestion that this story says marriage is what the wife of Bath, Chaucer's wife of Bath, will call a misery and a woe. Ooh. Of course, think about it from religious perspectives. In the Catholic Church, marriage is called a sacrament. That means the most holy of holy things. Marriage. And yet, notice in this story, you have someone challenging the very idea. Yeah, marriage ain't much, but... You know, it's kind of like a financial arrangement, and girls get the bad end of the situation. They get jacked. All right, let's jump now to level three and how you relate to a story like this. First of all, at 3A, let's ask about other texts you're, uh, you're aware of. We've already mentioned a number of academic texts, but now I want to go to stuff you know. Let's ask this question. What is for you your favorite TV show, movie of a marriage? that shows the relationship between a husband and a wife. What is it for you? It might be comedy, it might be tragedy. What is for you your favorite show about a man and a woman getting married and living together? Okay, and how they survive that or they don't survive that. What is for you your favorite show about that? What is your favorite love story? See, I've had students that say, Reading this story really upsets me because I like to read those novels and short stories where the guy and the girl meet and everything is so awesome and they fall in love and they get up every morning and he makes breakfast for her and it's like so awesome. And then I read a story like this and it's like, ugh. Let's jump to 3B really quickly. What are your, what are your thoughts about marriage? Let me just ask a series of questions and you can jot down quick answers at, at 3B. Question, do you imagine that at any point in your life going forward that you will say to another person, I will live exclusively with you in a marriage relationship? Can you even imagine that you would ever do that? And now if you say yes to that, I'll ask a series of continued questions. Obviously, if you write, no way, uh-oh, you just cursed yourself, sorry. No, uh, no, if you say no, then maybe jot down why. Why you would never imagine that you would ever want to live with another person in a 
relationship that we would call marriage? Why would you say no to that? But for those of you that say, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I could see myself doing that. Couple of questions. First question, what age, what age will you imagine you would be? For example, would it happen in two years? Uh, we just graduated another group of, uh, of our seniors, and one of those seniors who I, who I taught, she is 18 and a half years old, sent out marriage announcements. She is getting married. She met this guy, and she wants to marry him. Too young? I've had students that say, whoa, 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 before 20, too young. Okay, so 21. Hmm. Second question, what is too old? At what point in your life when you hit a certain age, if you're not married, you go, I'm a total loser. If you wrote down that someday you see yourself married, is it 30? If you are 30 years old and you are not married, are you a loser? Have you failed in this quest to be married? What is the ideal age? Or is it for you not a matter of age? but rather it's a matter of life choices. So for example, a student of mine said, no, 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 you don't understand. I have been coached by my mom. I know how this is gonna happen. I am gonna graduate. I am going to go to college, which will take me four to five years. At the end of college, four to five years, I will have met the guy that I'm going to marry. We will get married. So if I go to college starting at roughly age 20, then by age 25, I will be married. I will start having my first child at 26. That's the plan. That's how it's going to work out. Hmm. What is your idea of this? Next question. When you read a story like this, do you think it's true that marriage is a trap? Is it 